Hello and welcome to the Sharp 600, brought to you by Covers.com. I'm your host, Jason Logan. Welcome to the Friday edition of the podcast as we embark into unknown territory here for the Sharp 600. A football-free weekend staring us in the face. What are we, what are we supposed to do with us here as Super Bowl bye week comes to a close? As we mentioned on the Tuesday pod, we got some awesome stuff ahead for Super Bowl week uh, as we get you ready for 57. And uh, we're going to be doing the Tuesday pod focusing on everything but football. We're going to get silly. We're going to dive into the exotic props. It should be some fun. And then we're taking the show on the road. We're heading to Phoenix here, uh, going to Media Center, going to Radio Row for Super Bowl 57, working alongside Caesar Sportsbooks. We're going to bring you all the in-game props on the Thursday podcast. And then we're going to break away from the quick-hitting 10-minute format that we've been doing on the Friday podcast, more of like a sharp 1200-ish kind of podcast. Uh, we're going to put the finishing touches on our football coverage here for Super Bowl 57. We're going to have some different voices on that pod. It should be a lot of fun. And then there could be a little surprise between then and, and game day as well, too. So stay tuned to the podcast. Have those alerts set to go. Uh, we definitely don't want you to miss anything here as we get ready for this final football game of the season. And joining me in the desert is going to be my producer, Dell, who, uh, you, buddy, you got to stay focused here. We have the task at hand, but also you are an Eagles fan. You have the stress of your favorite team playing in the Super Bowl. And then you've got this the football-free weekend here. What do you got planned? Are you got a little spa day set up? What do you got going on? No, I'm going to watch a lot of basketball. Happy to get away from the football for a bit. Big basketball right. fan. Looking forward to after the Super Bowl, actually. Trying to keep the Eagles in the back of mind right now. Not in the front. Focused more on the content and uh, getting the work done, you know? But uh, it, should, it, should, it should be a great opportunity. I'm excited to get to the heat. Put some shorts on, like you said last <laughs> time. <laughs> that heat, my bones are sore. Yeah. It's goddamn cold out. Don't forget your chapstick. You don't want that red ring of death. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You dry out real quick in the desert. All right. So before we get going, we ask that if you like the Sharp 600, uh, please rate and review the podcast. We definitely appreciate that. If you got a few free seconds, send us some feedback. We'd love to hear that as well, too. And now, 600 seconds on the clock, please. Super Bowl, please, and step on it. Yay! Yay! All right. Last we talked on Tuesday, the line was moving off Eagles minus two. Down to minus one and a half. That's pretty much where we sit right now. Market consensus, minus one and a half. Some respected shops dealing it a little lower. Eagles, minus one. Early money was on Philadelphia. Moved this one as far as Kansas City, minus one and a half was an opener that we saw at some sports books that went as high as Eagles, minus two. Saw the buyback. Now all the uh, eyes are on the injury status for Kansas City. We're going to start with the wide receivers. Casey optimistic about the health of Juju Smith-Schuster and Kadarius Tony. Likely not going to have McCole Hardman back, though. He returned for that AFC title game. Re-aggravated a hip injury. Probably out. As for the defensive guys, Willie Gay had positive scans on his shoulder, was limited in practice Thursday, looks pretty good. And then corner, Legereus Sneed in concussion protocol, but while he didn't practice, he was back on the field stretching and doing conditioning, which is the next step forward in like a five-step protocol. So things looking good for Kansas City on the injury front. Mainstream operators still heavy on Eagles action, ticket count, bet handle still well over 60% in favor of Philly. However, I think as we see some Chiefs come back to practice and as the public starts to roll in and bet this game, they're going to see Mahomes as an underdog and gravitate there. I think it's going to move towards a pick em. I think we could close Kansas City 1, uh, which was the look-ahead line before the whole AFC Championship and NFC Championship played out on Sunday. As far as the total here, it was 49.5 to 50 when we talked in the Tuesday pod. It jumped up as high as 51 points with overplay showing up on Wednesday and Thursday. Then we saw buyback market consensus right now, 50 and a half. There are some online shops still as high as 51, still as low as 49 and a half. So shop around uh, books reporting, interesting splits here all over under, uh, but those are going to get blown up as the public comes in, in the uh, next week or so. And uh, the uh, Super Bowl is a rare beast because this is a market where the sharps come in early. They may kind of vulture later on, but it is a market dictated by the petting, betting public. And this year with sports betting, just exploding, it's going to be even bigger. None of those new sports bettors or fans or casual players want to sit through a low-scoring Super Bowl. So there will be a surplus of overaction. Last year, we saw around 58% uh, range in terms of ticket and overcount when it was all said and done for the over in the Super Bowl. So as I mentioned, we saw buyback under yesterday at 51. If tickets, uh, if stuff climbs up to 51 earlier to kickoff, you probably could see some sharp guys buying back under then. Uh, on Tuesday... We ran down some of the early bets that we did have for Super Bowl, or at least that I had for Super Bowl. Kansas City plus two took that one, expecting this one to come back, so getting a good number there. And then I took the under, which is the most conflicting bet I feel about right now. If you can't get out behind the full game under, I think the first half under could be a good one there, 24 and a half. 
Uh, a few more bets placed. I went Jalen Hurts and I went over on his props for rushing. I took over nine and a half rushing attempts. I took over 48 and a half yards rushing. Market has moved to 10 and a half on those rushing attempts with the over as high as even money. 48 and a half still out there on the board. It is as high as 50 and a half. Still believe we get 11 or more carries from Hurts. He's going to have his number called plenty on this run game. Casey has not had to deal with a lot of dual threat QBs, nor a lot of zone read offense in the last few years. We did see them give up yards to Lamar Jackson, and he gave up some yards to Hurts on the ground too when they took on those teams early last year. Hurts is also going to be running from that Casey pass rush. Um, And then he's that guy on the QB keepers as well too in short yardage. So uh, he really wasn't asked to make plays with his legs so far in the playoffs. They've been blowing out teams, especially in the second half. This one's going to be tighter. I think he goes for 11 or more carries, and I think he cracks 50 yards on the ground. Took Travis Kelsey even money to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. This market is as high as minus 130. However, there's still some low prices out there. Caesar Sportsbooks has minus 109, which is a really good price. This is not going to get any better. Everyone and their dog is going to have a ticket on Kelsey to score a touchdown next week. So get that short price now as you can because he is Mahomes' top target. And then in the sacks market, there's a lot of nice plus money prices out there on the over half a sack for guys like Sweat, Javon Hargraves, uh, Brandon Graham. Some good plus money returns for them to get a sack in the Super Bowl. Game script for me says Mahomes is going to be passing a lot, whether they're up or down. And I think that just lends some opportunity for him to get hit. They gave up three sacks to Cincy last week. Two of those came to guys on the left side. Uh, Chiefs O-line is going to have their hands full with Reddick, that's for sure, and it opens up those mismatches for the defensive ends uh, with tight ends and running backs having to chip in on pass protection. Josh, Josh Sweat at plus 145 is a nice return. I like him over Graham because Graham is starting to be this rotational pass rusher, not seeing the same snap counts. Sweat had 11 sacks in the regular season. He had one and a half sacks versus the Giants. He has nine in his last eight games overall. So Josh Sweat over half a sack, plus 145. Dell, what you got for Super Bowl bets? You mentioned Jalen Hurts. I also like Jalen Hurts, but I'm going over 296.5 on his passing and rushing yards. I believe it's going to be a tight game, resulting in Hurts throwing the ball a lot and scrambling out of the pocket. Typically this season, the Eagles have led, and they have one of the best offensive lines in the game, resulting in a heavy run game. But against a high-powered offense like the Chiefs, I think Jalen Hurts will be heavily involved. And then mm-hmm. I also like a we've we've done a lot of teasers this year. We're the Team 600 teaser, so I'm going to keep it going. Just a little solo teaser, though. I'm going to tease the Chiefs up to plus seven and a half, and then I'm going right. to tease the over down to 44 and a half. You can get that at minus 120. I think that's going to be a pretty popular one, but uh, yeah, the teasers have been good for us this year since we started doing those. But speaking of more bets. Never too soon to start thinking about Super Bowl futures, and book's not shy. The 58 odds are out there. Super Bowl 58 odds are out there. Uh, We had some fun with Rihanna songs early in the season. We're going to go back to her rich catalog of music. We're going to assign a Rihanna song to some of these Super Bowl 58 futures. So what do we got first? I want you to stay. All right, that one is stay. This one goes up to the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers, who are listed at plus 3,500 at Caesar Sportsbooks and win the Super Bowl. Will he stay? Will he go? Rodgers apparently is not going to San Francisco after a quick quip at a Pro-Am golf tournament this week, but Vegas, a reunion with Adams, definitely possible. Packers fans, though, I, I think they want their MVP quarterback to stay in Green Bay. Next one. Woo, this beat tastes like lunch, but it's running from veneers and it's running from the front. All right, that one's Rihanna with N-E-R-D. Uh, Farrell Williams, guys. That one goes out to the New York Jets, plus 4,000 odds to win the Super Bowl, who have a lemon on their hands in Zach Wilson. Team said it is committed to the young QB improving, but there's a reason why we see the Jets near the top of all these QB next prop, next team prop markets. They may also have a lemon on their hands after hiring shamed Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett as their OC. Next song, please. Because if you let me, here's what I'll do. That's a good jam. That's Rihanna and Drake. Take care. That one goes out to the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson, plus 3,500 odds. Jackson still doesn't have that new contract, and the Ravens are expected to franchise tag him here for 2023, which means Jackson is once again at the risk of injury, ruining a deserved long-term deal. Jackson, of course, missed the end of the Ravens season, missed the playoffs with the knee injury. He caught some flack for it as well, too. People give him a hard time. You know, uh, if he's back on a franchise tag, he will definitely take care Maybe we don't see as many runs from him if Baltimore slaps him with the franchise tag. If if I'm Lamar, I'm honestly, I would sit it out. I would say franchise me and I'm not playing. Go get your money, man. Last song. I hate how much I love you, boy. 
All right, that's a good one. That's hate how much I love you, Rihanna and Neo. This one could pretty much go out to anyone that, that holds a futures ticket on their favorite team. But I'm going to dedicate it to my Dallas Cowboys, plus 1,600 to win next year's Super Bowl. All right. But, uh, you know, once again, you get my hopes up. And then, of course, you tore the heart out of my chest. I hate how much I love you, Cowboys fans, which I think is a sentiment that most football fans can agree with right now. Two-minute drill time here with Arthur DeCesar of the Superbook. Action's building up. Tell me about the spread. Tell me about the action. Where do you see this one going? So we opened pick. We hit as high as Eagles two and a half. We're now Eagles one and a half. So no surprise the chief money came back. I think we're right in that range. One to one and a half. I think that's where the game will end. Yeah. Do you see this going back towards KC at all or no? Mm, It could, but I think we've kind of middled it now. And I think we're going to stay in the middle here. All right. Let's talk total here. It has gone down, ticked up, gone down again. Where are you guys at? Yeah, we opened 48 and a half and it instantly was nothing but over money. We hit maybe our apex yesterday at 51. We're now mm-hmm. back to 50 and a half. I don't know if maybe it goes back to 50. I think 51 though is probably the apex. So you'll start seeing the under money come back in. Yeah, no shortage of overaction showing up here before uh, game day from the, uh, the general Joes. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, that's usually what happens and overs are always popular. People want to, you know, root for points. They don't want 10-7. Yep. Uh, okay, you guys famous for your prop bets coming out. You released them there last night. Which ones did the sharp guys jump on? Which ones have moved the most? Yeah, a couple. A couple of interesting ones. Total yardage of field goals made. We opened at 102.5. We hit as high as 118.5. Now back down to 115.5. So you saw a 16-yard move to the over. Crazy. All yeah. right. Props are out. Any sneaky good props you'd make right now? I think one that's interesting, just because I think it's going to be a close game, I think largest lead of the game, under 14 and a half. It was minus 130. It's only minus 140 now. And people, you always got to remember, you're going to pay juice on props. It's just the way it is. But I think it's going to be a tight game. So, you know, you stay with under the 14. There you go. All right. MVP action. Who do you think could be a long shot to steal the show? Well, obviously, the people who are getting the most action are the quarterbacks. You know, Patty at, you know, plus 120, Hurts at plus 130. Each side, Gainwell, 200 to 1, and Pacheco, 60 to 1. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think we saw some Miles Sanders movement as yep. well, too, today at some places. All right. I know we've gone over the horn. Best Super Bowl bet for right now. We'll get one closer to game day, but best bet for Super Bowl right now. Right now, I'm going to make Dell real happy. Eagles minus one and a half. You guys can line up. I'm on Kansas City plus two. All right. I don't think, honestly, I don't, I don't know if there's a wrong side in this. I mean, yeah. eventually there will be, but I mean, you can make a case for both sides. So yeah, I, I can absolutely see that. All right. That is it for this episode of the Sharp 600. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Dell. Thank you for tuning in and listening. A reminder too, that if you got a couple seconds, please rate and review the Sharp 600 and then keep, uh, keep your eye on things. Next week, we're going to be having a pod on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, a little special something there before game day as well too. So keep an eye out, turn your alerts on and get ready for that. Have a fun non-football weekend here and good luck.